All right. What? Are we allowed to use quotes about perspective? Uh, you would. You are only allowed to use quotes from the book. Okay. Hey, you have to flip the book. Turn to page one hundred five. One sentence in a in a quote hook. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Do you want to use a whole paragraph? No. No. That's where you can also get into trouble is you find something that you think is good, but it ends up being like this long, like monologue where someone just talks and talks and talks and talks. And then your quote hook is longer than the rest of your uh, introduction paragraph. Yeah, I can. No, I can say it. I don't need your help. Oh, that's a huge eye. All right. So there's my quote. Now, you already know this because I've been talking about it. All right? Who says this? Actually, hey, everybody turn to page 105. Everybody turn to page 105 in your book. Turn to page 105. It's towards the top part of the, the page, about a third of the way down. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, just use my book. Did I take yours? Yeah. I'm going to blame Adam for that. You know, I have a book. There's one on the table over there. Page 105, about a third of the way down. What? What the heck? What? This is blasphemy. Okay, well, look on somebody's right now. Look at somebody else's right next to you. Hey, Jalen, there's one of that desk right next to you? Not one of that one. Hey, Addison, come and get one out of Trevor's desk right here. All right. No one's talking? All right, now here's the problem with this. Is this all Julie's dad says in that, in that part of the book? No. There's another quote above it, right? But I don't want to use that. All right? So I have to tell my reader... I have to tell my reader who said this and who they're saying it to because that's important. Okay? Does it have, can I use a quote where somebody doesn't say anything? Yes, I can. Because if I look at that same page, I guarantee I can find something right here. Okay, look on page 104. Right below where it says 104, the first line it says, To me, Uncle David was only a name. Now let's say I wrote an essay about Caden. Sit up. Sit up. Sit up. That's not what I'm really writing an essay about, about Caden sitting up. Okay, that was different. Okay, let's say I was writing an essay about Uncle David for my uh, assignment. And I wanted to use that as, an, as my hook. To me, Uncle David was only a name. Is she saying that to anyone? No. No, she's not. To me, Uncle... Uncle David was only a name. Okay. So I got two quotes here. One something someone said. Another one, what was she doing? She was thinking it, right? But I can use it as a quote. She wasn't thinking out loud. She was thinking out loud would mean you'd actually be saying it. Like, I wish Merrick would raise his hand when he speaks in my class so he's not interrupting me. Like that was me thinking out loud because I wasn't directly talking to you, I was just thinking out loud. So, a direct quote would have been, Merrick, please raise your hand if you have something to say because you're interrupting me and it's frustrating. Thank you for telling me that now. Okay, gotta be quiet. All right, so I have this stuff. 
Okay. Now, who's talking? Raise your hand. Let me know. Raise your hand. Let me know. Uh, Jack, who's talking? Julie's dad. Julie's dad, or we could also call him Mr. Mr. Baker. Okay. Does does Jim's does Bryce's dad say his name when they meet each other? At the dinner. At the dinner. Hold on. Let's, let's. No, wait. They said. Um, they said the dad's name, and I think they said Mr. Baker. Hold on, hold on. I got a couple of places. Rick. No, that's Rick. That, that's that's Bryce. Bryce. That's Lossky's dad. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I think there might. His name is Robert. Yes, found it. The, the, the woman at Greenhaven says his name. So I uh, could say Robert. But like, no one really knows him as Robert, right? It doesn't even sound right. Okay? So I could just say Mr. Baker, right? Mr. Baker. I don't want to say Julie's dad, and I'm going to show you why. Now, in this situation, you don't want to say Robert said. Because no one knows who Robert is, especially someone that's never read the book. If I came in here today and said, listen, I'll give you guys $20 cash for whoever can tell me who Robert in the book Do was. Like quit, quit talking. If I said who Robert in the book is that we in flipped, who is Robert? If you can tell me without opening your book, first try, I'll give you $20. It's, it's a hypothetical. It's not really going to happen, Kevion. I don't have $20. If I did, I'm not giving it to you. Okay? Miss Stoking steals all my money. I only get oh, so much. Sad. I only get so many days. It's part of life, though. Okay. So, how many of you would have been able to do that? Explain your line. Okay. All right. So we need to know that this is Mr. Baker. Okay. And you know what? What you can do, you can explain it. So I could say this in a couple different ways. I could say. Because we don't want to say said Mr. Baker, and we don't want to put the line. You see how it says law, that little dash with Albert Einstein? We don't do that in an actual writing. Okay? So I could say, I can do this a couple different ways. I could say Mr. Baker uh, talking to Julie. Okay, you guys see that? That's my quote. That lets my reader know that that was Mr. Baker talking to Julie. I could also say Julie's dad talking to her. I wouldn't want to say Julie again. Why wouldn't I want to say Julie at the end? But I do say use names, but why wouldn't I want to? Starts with an R. Repetitive. repetitive. Okay? I'm being repetitive. I don't want to say Julie's dad talking to Julie. So Julie's dad talking to her. So either one of those would work. Okay? You explain to your reader who is talking and why. Now, if this was just Julie or just Bryce talking, I could just say, you know, like, don't cry, none of this is your fault. We'll work it out. I promise we will. Said Bryce. I got it? Because your all your readers going to quickly find out that Julie and Bryce are important characters, they're main characters, and the story's about that. Now the second one, she was thinking, she wasn't saying this out loud, but it would be a good hook if I was writing something about Uncle David. To me, Uncle David was only a name. Julie, what did she say it? She thought. Who was she thinking to? I think you can only think to yourself. I know. It was kind of a question that there was only one answer. Okay. So to me, Uncle David was only a name, Julie thinking to herself. So you explain to your reader that this was Julie saying this to herself. She wasn't saying it out loud, or she wasn't even thinking out loud. Okay? Does everybody understand that on how to do this quote? Okay, so your assignment, the first part of your assignment is this. Okay? Well, one, everybody should have finished 
Everybody should have finished this, uh, the summary of the story, and it should be on. It should be on your. Uh, what was it? The uh, flipped introduction page. You're going to transfer that. You're going to transfer that to the graphic organizer. So let me move this guy for a second. Show you what I'm talking about. All right. So I open up my graphic if I open up my graphic organizer, so this is my flipped introduction page from the other day. This is where I took um, I took all the information. I made my own summary of the story. I take that. I go into my flip graphic organizer, my first paragraph, my introduction paragraph. I go right here where it says include the title of the story. I'm going to copy and paste that right there. So the book flipped is about two kids, Bryce and Julie, and their friendship through childhood. Uh, there should be a period here. That should be capitalized. Since the first time they met, Julie wanted Bryce to be her boyfriend. Period. Bryce did not feel the same way. However, events lead them to flip their views of each other. After revealing or realizing, he is in love with Julie. Bryce tries to fix their relationship. All right. Then you're going to take the last sentence. You're going to put it in the next part of the graphic organizer. Through these different events, comma, Bryce or Julie, from their perspective on what changes, and then we were supposed to change a lot to a different word. Okay? So yours might say, through these different events, uh, Bryce's perspective on family changes greatly. Okay? Now, what you're going to do first is you're going to find a hook for your, for your essay. It needs to be a quote from the story, just like we just did. All right, you're gonna find something. You can even go back. So let's say you're doing Bryce and family, all right? Let's say I go to this page. This is what we used yesterday to find out all the uh, text evidence. So let's go to Bryce and family. Well, there's a whole bunch here, there's tons, okay? And I only need, how many do I need for my essay? How many pieces of evidence do I need for my essay? I have two body paragraphs, so I need two. Kevion's right, I need two. Well, I can use a bunch of different ones for my quote. So I can look at this and say, okay, I'm gonna use uh, this one, actually, I'm gonna use this one, and I wanna use this one. Oh, yeah. All right, where the dad slaps Lynn as my, actually, you know what? I'm gonna use this one and this one for my this one for my essay. And so I like page 157, and so I go to it. I know it's about Bryce and his family. And when I get there, I see I like this one right here. You are such a two-faced, condescending, narrow-minded jackass. Boom, there's my quote. Now you talk about getting your reader's attention. Okay? Also have to, like, let your uh, parents know that, hey, it's okay, it was in the book. Didn't make it up, you know what I mean, if they read your essay. Mr. Stone King said it was okay. Like, you see what I mean? Lynetta to, Lynetta to Bryce's dad. I could tie that in greatly with how Bryce's perspective of family changes at the end, right? Right? So you can use those other pieces of evidence to help you figure out 